I need to improve my 12 volt load test capability as well, obviously, because I was using two different inverters to try and get over that 200 amp mark. So I got this, the Renogy 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and it's got a transfer switch built in. So this takes your 12 volt uh, DC input from your battery and then turns it into a usable 230 volts AC so you can run your mains appliances with it. So this one's uh, clearly aimed at van or car life if you uh, live in a mobile setup or even for HGV drivers. This is what you would need to uh, run your lives while you're on the move. But it's not just that. For me, this is also about running from, or shed life if you want to call it, also running things as backup power from home. So if you've got cheap energy, you've got a bit of solar, just bolt this to the eel battery, which is what I'm going to uh, use for this, and see whether this matches up well with what the eel uh, battery box that I've built previously actually provides. So whether these are a good match, a good partnership, not just for on the move, but for at home and backup purposes as well. So uh, I'm just going to show you what you get in the box and uh, how much that costs me uh, from Amazon. So for the price it cost me, that's £209.99. I was quite impressed with what actually came in the box off the bat, if you'd like. So obviously you've got your uh, remote control here, wherever you're going to mount that for your mobile setup. And obviously you can use that anywhere you like. I mean, at home, if you've got a shed or anywhere that you want to set this up in a garage, for example, you can still use the remote uh, control as such. Uh, you've got two lots of cables that came with it as well. I'm going to use both of these. I'm going to double up when I connect uh, the inverter up to the eel battery because obviously I'm going to be pulling uh, up to 200 amps out of that. You get a cable thrown in obviously because it's the UK version here. This is for when you've got shore power, when you're uh, mobile or for actually when you've got uh, or using it at home and you just want to connect it up to a, a main socket just to use that and bypass using any of the battery. You obviously get the uh, manual, some little uh, warranty card there as well. And the other thing about these particular inverters from Renogy is that uh, they come in 1000, obviously the 2000 I've got, and 3000 watt versions as well. So if you were looking to be bigger or smaller than the setup I'm going to show you in this video. But yeah, quite impressed actually with what came in the box off the bat for the price that I paid. Right, before I connect this up to the eel battery to do a bit of testing and just uh, show you the setup, I'll have a quick look around the inverter itself. So starting off on the bottom here, as you can see, there's not much or not much of excitement there other than uh, a grill there for uh, ventilation purposes. You've got your four feet here to uh, set up uh, wherever you're going to mount this for. So in a mobile setup, obviously, wherever you're going to mount this to in your uh, cab of your lorry or your camper or your car or your van conversion, whatever. So uh, let's uh, have a look around the end. So this is the end, as you can see. So here's your input for shore power or so that you can use uh, grid power whether you're out and about or at home. And that's where the uh, transfer switch kicks in. You've got two uh, 230 volt outputs there, standard sort of mains plugs for the UK. Uh, you've got a switch here as well, which uh, switches between actually manually controlling this from this particular switch. So switching the inverter on and off from there um, and also using the remote, which you plug straight in there. And then obviously that allows you to switch this on and off from the little remote uh, thing that I've already shown you. And you've got a couple of uh, indicator lights here. So green is obviously when it's on and red is to indicate a fault. So nothing much else to talk about on that side. So the other end here, as you can see, you've got cooling fans as you expect. And we've got a couple of, see, I think they come off like that. So they come off and allow you to get access to the terminal for putting the cables on. So that's pretty much that, and that's the quick tour of the inverter box done. Almost forgot you've got your ground mounting point there as well. So when I was looking for just the inverter side of it, not only to test, but to make this uh, usable around the house and just for off-grid backup really, was actually trying to match up these requirements. Now this 2000 watt inverter here would pretty much run most of the major appliances obviously on their own in my home. So I'm gonna do some tests uh, later on just to check whether I can sort of like run a dishwasher, uh, run a washing machine load or whatever. And because this can store up to almost three and a half kilowatt hours worth of raw storage. So you won't get entirely all of that as part of this because there will be losses converting and charging, etc. But I just wanted to see whether this would just run and provide a, a suitable backup at home, meaning you could pretty much run anything from a mobile setup with this combination. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to show you something in the fact that um, you should really make sure you've got some kind of fuse uh, between your inverter, especially if you're in a mobile setup. You should really have 
all of your electrics or your electric lines within your whole setup fused at some point or other. But the beauty of this EEL uh, battery uh, kit is it's already got a fuse which is connected directly inside to the positive terminal. So the advantage of that is the fact you don't need to cut cables or run additional fuses outside of this particular box, which again is a real plus point for me. Um, you can also put isolators, so the switches that you can get, the DC switches you can get, you can use those. But that's the real advantage of this. And in actual fact, I checked the specifications, which is on screen at the moment, and the recommended fuse size for this inverter is actually 250 amps. Well, would you believe it? That's actually what's um, in here. Uh, on screen as well at the moment is actually a 250 uh, amp fuse and the beauty of this is as well because the lid can be removed uh, it's not sealed away so if it does ever blow and you do get to that situation you can actually replace it so again another plus point of this marriage if you like between this battery and this inverter for mobile or home usage so I'm going to get the cables now and get this hooked up so something else that I do when I'm hooking up inverters to batteries is usually make sure I hook up the inverter first. Now the reason I do that is even though this battery here has an on-off switch, meaning these terminals are effectively dead at the moment, uh, if you connect up the battery first and then you've got the cables or the other ends of the cables and you're moving them around and you forget the battery's on or it isn't switched off, for example, they're actually live. So even though this is only 12 volts in this particular setup's case, uh, you could actually be going around and it can put a lot of amps through so you could get some pretty serious sparks going on. So that's why I usually connect up the inverter first, which I've done now. And because I'm using both of the cables, obviously because I want to be able to run up to the 200 amp uh, limit on this, uh, I wanted to make sure that I got these flush so that I could put the covers back on. So I've got the covers on. And remember to put the covers back on before you connect the other ends up to the battery or whatever your setup's likely to be. So um, I connected one side, or sorry, one cable on the top and one cable on the bottom. So that if I tried to do it the other way, because of the way these are crimped, I wouldn't have been able to get this back over because they would be up too far and they wouldn't have been connected. Because obviously you need to have these back on to make sure that the terminals and any metal that's exposed is no longer exposed. And these can only really go one way around. So I'm gonna plug those back in now. So let's get that in there. Let's just move that around. And as you can see, it's still tight when you're running two cables. So let's plug that in there like so. Okay, that's one done. And let's wiggle that one around and then that should clip back in. Okay, so that's the inverter uh, hooked up now. So I'm gonna now plug it into the battery. So connected up to the battery now and I had to do the same thing because of the way these are crimped. I've put both of these uh, two connections back to back if you like, so that I can actually get these covers on. So uh, that should just click over the top now. So there's enough room and that obviously covers the metal pieces and the same for this one as well. So they literally just click on on top like that. And that means all of the terminals are now protected by a cover and um, it's ready to power on. So uh, I'm gonna switch it on now. So one touch of the button. So that is now powered up. So what I'm gonna do is uh, flip this round and then we'll start to test. Right, time to power it up now. So I've got the power meter in here just so that I can see what's uh, coming out of the plug before I plug anything in. And uh, I've got the switch here. So I'm gonna use the number one option on here which is switching on directly from the inverter. I'm also gonna plug in the remote if this all works just to show you that that actually works by plugging that in. And also plug in and just do a quick test on the uh, direct from mains approach as well on the transfer switch to see that it switches away from the battery straight on to effectively taking the power that's coming in here and using it straight out of the sockets right here. So let's switch it on. All right, so we've got a green light, heard a click, and it looks like we've got some movement on the uh, power meter. So let's just check, go through that. It might be difficult to see actually. So it says we're getting 227 volts at the socket. So the reason I'm gonna get probably questions about these sockets and while they're this way up, because if you mount this to a board, you know, wherever you're gonna mount it, then the sockets, the UK sockets, will then be passing out here. So the uh, leads will come out of here. Otherwise, if this is mounted the other way, these won't plug in properly, just in case I get any questions on that. 
So that's great. I'm going to go and switch this off now. I'm going to go and grab the remote and let's see if that works as well. Remote test now. So I'm going to switch it on to the number two switch there. And let's now switch it on. As you can see, it's got the lights on there as well. So if you did get a fault uh, and you were just using this in your, you know, wherever your mobile setup is or your shed setup is or whatever, you'd at least see the fault on here, which is replicated from on here on the inverter. We've also got a green light on there. And we've got power at the terminals, as you expect, 227 volts. So that's the uh, remote tested. So let's switch that off. And obviously it does the reverse. So that works perfectly. So before I kick off and do a quick transfer switch test, I'd always check the uh, fuses that come in the uh, attached cables. And this is quite a meter cable actually, so uh, it's, it feels of good quality. And you might not be able to see that, but on there it's got a 13 amp fuse, so I always double check those uh, before I connect anything up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get uh, another power supply in here so that we can actually just do a test with this uh, two kilowatt fan heater. Right, quick test time now. So uh, I'm going to be checking on the BMS app on my phone just to see what's drawing on the uh, battery itself. And then I'm going to switch on uh, the uh, power supply, which is down here. So hopefully the transfer switch will take the load that's already being drawn from the battery and move it straight over to the mains. Well, that's the theory anyway. So I'll put up the uh, BMS app on screen as well. So first things first, let's switch on the uh, inverter. If I can try and see this from where I am at the moment. So the inverter is now switched on and we heard the click, so it's ready to go. So let's turn on the uh, fan heater and I'm not gonna run this for too long so I don't like wasting energy. So there we have, we've got it drawing, what's shown on there as 157 amps at the moment. So power drawing is just over two kilowatts. So uh, let's go and switch the power supply on now at the wall. And let's see if that drops off. And there we have it. You heard the click and the transfer switch there is now running directly off of the mains. So that's a successful test if you're using it in a mobile setup and using shore power or you're using it at home. Brilliant. Right, time for its first proper test now. So I'm going to run a dishwasher uh, load. I've got it full up at the moment. Uh, I'm going to run it on a 50 degree eco wash. Uh, I've got the uh, power meter plugged in there as well. I'm hoping that's visible on there. I'll show you what it looks like at the end of the uh, wash cycle. So what I'm going to do now as well is I'm just going to go onto my phone and have a quick uh, look at the uh, BMS to just check that everything's in there. So I think we're in good shape now. So yeah, I just put that up on screen. So yeah, we're in good shape now. So I'm going to switch it over and let's kick off the wash load. So that's kicked in now, ready to go. I'm going to move this round as well. So I can see the watts that are being pulled and I'll show you how much it consumes by the end of the wash cycle. So let's see what we're on at the moment. So it's consuming, I'm hoping that's visible. So it's consuming 14 watts at the moment. Obviously it will go up to uh, well, this dishwasher can go up to 2.1 kilowatts. So I've just put a label on screen as well for you to have a look at. So what we do is we'll see how well um, this runs and whether it actually runs the load or not. So again, however I charge this battery, I can charge this battery from solar, I can use it from cheap uh, overnight energy or like myself, I'm on agile tariff at the moment. It's very windy here at the UK at the moment. So I'm hoping the rates are going to fall overnight, meaning that I can uh, recharge this. So you can use mains chargers, solar panels, or if you're in a mobile setup, obviously a DC to DC charger. And that DC to DC charger can also come with MPPT included. I think Renergy do two flavours of that, a 30 and a 50 amp, I believe. Uh, but um, yeah, let's uh, let this run, um, see how it goes and see how it deals with going up. And again, this isn't going to be running two kilowatts all the time, but as it's heating the water as part of the wash cycle, it will do. So uh, I'll come back at the end of this and show you what it's done. So one other thing I just want to quickly cover off is the fact that obviously I would never run this setup 
next to something that has water in it. So this is purely for this demo and everything around here is dry. I won't be using the sink which is up there. Um, I wouldn't do this so I'd normally have this on an extension lead probably in the garage or somewhere out of reach of any kind of water. So I just thought I'd cover that off just in case any comments come rolling in on that one. Okay so let's have a look through. So the timing on the clock there is 1 hour and 21 minutes. So let's go through. It's currently using point nine of a watt because it's in drying mode. I hope you can see that. A little drying on the plate there. So it's in drying mode. So it's still running in the cycle, but the majority of the cycle is complete. So it's used, sorry about the glare on this, but it's used somewhere in the region of 0.74 of a kilowatt hour. Uh, it's currently got 227 volts at the socket. It's obviously drawing virtually nothing in the amps perspective. So its lowest was 0.2 of a watt, and its highest during the cycle was 2,033 watts. So perfect test for this uh, this Renergy setup, and also what this can draw up to 2.1 kilowatts. And what else have we got? That's it. So uh, I would say that's been a very successful test. So what I'm going to do now is just go over to my phone and show you what's uh, left in the uh, BMS app. So back in the uh, BMS app, as you can see, and um, you can see that the remaining capacity has obviously dropped and uh, remaining uh, battery, as in percentage terms, down to 45%. But uh, all the uh, cell voltages are still pretty good and well aligned. And bearing in mind, I've got balancing off. So, there are no alarms or anything to worry about on there. Uh, nothing is really cropped up. So let's just type in the password, which is 123456. And yep, nothing of any value or issues on there as well. So I would say that is a very good match in terms of the uh, Renergy 2000 watt inverter and the EEL 280 amp hour 12 volt battery. So another common question I get about inverters is what is the standby load? So what I mean by that is when nothing's connected as it is at the moment and the inverter is switched on, how much does it continue to draw? Because it has a standby or a base load that it draws off of the battery all the time it's on. So in this case, I've just put this uh, DC clamp meter and you can see it's doing 1.22 amps at the moment. So with no load on it, all the time this inverter is switched on, it's going to be drawing around that figure there. So it says in the manual that I think it draws, I'm just going to put it on screen actually after the fact, it draws 1.3 amps. So yeah, that's about right in terms of uh, keeping this on when you've got nothing on it. So you might need to do that for fridges and so forth. But in general terms with the remote control, you can pretty much switch this off when you want to, just to save any sort of... I won't call it vampire draw, but any draw that you don't need to waste from the battery itself. But yeah, this one uses, or is currently using, 1.22 amps, so slightly under what's in the manual. So there you have it. So that's the uh, review of these two, and they're actually really well matched so far. I'm going to continue to do tests, obviously, on the inverter and use that to uh, run major appliances, multiple things and that, and I'll feedback in other videos on that front. And also I've got these coming over from China as we speak. So it should be in around five or six weeks time. So I can start building those for people that have already requested them. But yeah, a powerful combination so far. And again, I'll continue to test it. So if you do have any comments or questions in terms of this particular setup, how it's working or anything you need on the specifics of that. Uh, I'm also going to continue to um, test other energy stuff because I've got pretty much all of the Renergy um, offerings in terms of solar panels at the moment. I've obviously got the 100 watt folding uh, suitcase panel. I've got the uh, 200 watt panel, which has been proving really reliable and good as well. And that's had a few knocks as well. I've got the um, flexible uh, 50 watt panel as well, which I'm also uh, been testing. I've left it outside all winter to see if that still copes and works all right. And I've also got the uh, new kid to the block, which is the 115 watt bifacial panel so obviously a two-phase panel there um, which I'll be testing more when the sun does stay out for longer than 10 minutes between rain showers. I'll also cover off more on because um, I've had questions on uh, how these batteries should be charged or how you can charge them from mobile to home use so I'll be covering off or trying to cover off DC to DC charging um, so Renergy have got a couple of offerings in that camp, including MPPT solar charging as well. So if you've got a mobile setup you want to do on that, 
So I'm gonna look more into that as well. Also just attaching a, an MPPT solar charge controller directly to the battery as well. And also finding mains charger options as well. But there you have it. So if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just pop them in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned to Dad Vinci.